welcome back. You're watching Talking Business with me, Aaron Hazelhurst. Let me just remind you of the top story, and it is the chief executive of Samsung Electronics, Kwon One, has resigned following what he describes as an unprecedented crisis at the firm. The wider Samsung group is still coming to terms with the loss of its de facto boss, Jay Wiley. We'll keep across the Samsung saga. Hey, it's that time. It's Friday. It's that time for our next uh, in the series of million dollar ideas. You are probably sitting less than a few feet away from today's product. It's a game changing idea that's. Uh, well, revolutionise the, the way we furnish and well, our homes and our offices. Take a look. Hey, it's Bluetac. Yeah, it's what teenagers have been using since the 1970s to stick up posters in their bedrooms. But how was it invented? Go back to 1969 to the Bostic Glue Factory here in Britain. <laughs> Scientists, they were working on a new bathroom sealant. The result, uh -uh, it was a failure. Just a sticky pile of white goo. They took it up from the lab and dumped it on someone's desk. And here's what happened. The staff started taking the little bits, sticking them on notes, and sticking them on each other's desk. Hey, bingo! Bostic realized we've got a new product. But there's a mystery. No one knows who actually invented it. Oh, by the way, they made the sticky stuff blue, so children wouldn't mistake it for chewing gum. And today, Bostic makes 100 tons of this stuff every week. And the weirdest thing Blue Tack's ever been used for? Probably this. A 400-pound sculpture of a spider. I ain't gonna stick that one on my bedroom wall. Okay, for many of you being locked up in a confined space, well, it'd probably, well, no doubt, be your worst nightmare. But now people are paying for that privilege. Huh. Yeah, I'm talking about this new breed of puzzle called escape rooms, where players must complete a series of tasks in order to, to secure their release from their fictional prison. Let's get more. Daniel uh, Hill is the founder and entrepreneur of Escape Game Design, and we're privileged to have you with us as well, Daniel. Um, Escape rooms, what, how did you come up with the idea and, and the designs? Well, basically what happened is, in 2007, I think they started out in Japan, and these escape rooms had been on everybody's phones, and I think the market as a whole... So you played it on a game yeah, and a phone, absolutely. right. absolutely. Um, and then one of my friends went and played one abroad, and he sent me a text message saying, this is the type of stuff that you'll definitely be interested in, uh, so I must have a reputation. <laughs> um, and, yeah, had a look at it, and... A couple of months later, we were set up and on we went. And was it, can you say, was it a success? Because was that, the, the, had there been in the UK prior to that? There were four or five before us, um, started out in 2013. And so we started in May 2014 in Scotland, first one in Scotland, and from there on, we were very lucky, did very well. And we've now got loca over 40 locations. You got some funny locations. I know there's about 2,800 around around <laughs> the world. I mean, it is, yeah. and they can charge anything. What from say we talk dollars on this show? So 25 bucks to 30 bucks to 40 bucks a game. I played one in Vegas just over a month ago, and that was 50 dollars. Yeah, That's Vegas. Yeah, yeah. that was a high-end game with an actor in it, and so there's there's varying levels and different things you can do with the game. So. It's but they're becoming a very corporate thing as well in terms of like for example, this is an amazing story. You've sat with company bosses who have used. Yeah. Escape rooms as a recruitment tool. Absolutely. So it's very interesting to see groups, the group dynamic within the rooms. So we've had bosses come in, take five applicants who have to work together to get a common goal. But at the end of the day, there's only one position. So it's, it's quite interesting to see the characters that come out in those And scenarios. that will help them choose the right applicant yeah. by going through that. Is it tricky to have, because you have several different themes, yeah. right? And the different, is that tricky to come? How do you do it? Do you just sit around at night, have a few beers and go, hey, how do you do it? <laughs> Just watch TV. Um, there's so many things that become popular culture. So things that there's a big focus on kind of witchcraft and wizardry and medieval items at the minute. Um, at the start, you found a lot of zombies, prison rooms, pirate ships. So yeah, I mean, why would you watch an adventure when you can take part in one? It mm. seems you know it's uh, immersive entertainment. It's probably, hopefully, it's the future. And, and in very very briefly, about 20 seconds, you, you you're expanding. Yes. Is it tough? Because it is a competitive market. It is. The UK, we've got a number of sites in the UK and France, but maybe we're looking to go abroad, so kind of North America, further throughout Europe, because um, we've got a pretty good team now for, for the, the building aspect of things, so yeah, that'd be superb. Okay. We're talking of North America. 
There might be some people on Wall Street you could use to, to lock up yeah. a little bit because I'm about to show everybody what all the action on Wall Street as it enters its last trading day session there. And you can see the, the markets uh, slightly high. Again, what is it? The S&P and NASDAQ hitting record highs at the opening today. Again, after numbers showed that retail sales in the U.S. surged most in, what, two and a half years in September. Wow. Americans still love to shop. There you go. They will, they will use your rooms. Uh, that's it. I'm back on Monday. Same time, same place. Have a great weekend. Follow me on Twitter at BBC Aaron. Philippa is back at the top of the hour with Impact. See you next week. Have a great weekend.